Hello friends, so today's video is going to be a list of some young adult book recommendations that are not Cassandra Clare, Sarah J Mass, Holly Black, a lot of those big name authors that you so frequently hear in recommendations lists. The books on this list are going to be a mix of both fantasy and science fiction, dystopian, those sorts of things, and that is true of this first one. It falls under the dystopian label and that would be Scythe by Neil Shusterman. So the setup for this story is that our own world has eventually gotten to a point where it has essentially conquered death. The only threat to mankind is overpopulation. Everything else, war, disease, aging, all of that, the threat of that has been eliminated, so we're really only having to deal with overpopulation. Space exploration has occurred, but thus far there is not anything that proves that we can sustainably live off-planet, and so now we're trying to figure out, well, what do we do with a planet filled with people that cannot die? And the only solution, and a very bizarre solution, is that there is going to be a revered group of individuals known as Scythes who will be responsible for permanently ending someone's life. I say permanently because of the advancements in technology and medication, people can essentially heal from any kind of wound. When a Scythe kills someone, however, that person, the things that would normally heal them, it is not triggered and thus they die. So Scythes are individuals who have this great responsibility on them. They have this very important burden on their shoulders. And one of the main characters, Scythe Faraday, is someone who takes this responsibility very seriously. He also is responsible for training a new generation with this particular task. And instead of taking one apprentice, he takes two. Those two apprentices are the main characters of the story, Rowan and Citra. And they are at first very resistant. They want nothing to do with this path. They just want to live their everyday lives, whatever that means for the two of them. But the more they get to know about the scythedom, the more they realize how dire the situation truly is and what they can do to potentially help mankind survive. Next up is a duology that I actually bring up quite a bit, and that would be Ray Bear and its sequel, Redemptor. The story follows a young girl whose mother was able to bring her into the world through magic involving a genie, a djinn, and in doing this, she now has the ability to essentially command something of her daughter, almost like fulfilling a wish, and the thing that she wants her daughter to do, that she tasks her with, is murdering someone. In order to even approach this, the young girl, Tari Sai, has to get close enough to this individual because they are a very important person within their society. So she has to gain their trust, get to know them. That way she has the proximity to accomplish this task. She does not want to do this. She grows to really like and become friends with this person. So this is not something that she's in favor of. You don't know why the mother wants her to do this. You don't know what her motives are, but that's something that you uncover as the story unfolds. The factor of friendship in this is part of why I love this story so much and why I think it is done so well. There is a romantic subplot, but the friendship element of the story, I think, kind of takes the spotlight, which I actually really like because, especially in young adult, I feel like there is almost always some kind of romantic factor that is a catalyst for a lot of what happens in the plot, the movement of the characters. So I liked that in a lot of ways. There is a romantic subplot, but the friendship makes it feel like a very realistic means of being a person. It's exploring different relationships that are a part of a person's life, and we're exploring this very complicated relationship with the character's mother and gray morality or just villainous type of characters and what that looks like when that is a person who's supposed to love you unconditionally. Next up, we have a new release, which would be Song of Silver, Flame Like Night. You can also check out Blood Air by this author. That trilogy is completed. I've only read the first one, but both of these I think are worth picking up. This author does a fantastic job at really diving into the characters in a way that organically they show themselves to you, you learn about them, you learn about their past, you get to know them at a pace that makes sense, but also you really dive into the characters and you really get to know why they are the way they are, the trauma that they've experienced and how that trauma has shaped them now and how different personalities react to different kinds of trauma. And when you see them where they are now, you as a reader will know why they are the way they are, but other people won't necessarily. And so it gives you more insight into how people behave and it just I think creates more empathy all around because you can see where okay well normally I might feel this way as a reader if I saw this scene if I didn't have that knowledge about their past so what does that say about how I 
see other people in real life and how if this person behaves this way, rather than placing myself at that, maybe I should take a step back and recognize, well, they have a backstory too, the same way that the characters in these sorts of stories do. And I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but I do think that when character backstories are revealed to you in a way that creates empathy, that that's a really masterful skill. And I really, really enjoy how the author goes about that in both this book and in Blood Air. The setup for this one is that we follow two young individuals who their land has been conquered and their culture, their magic is being stripped away from them. They are holding on to what little bit of themselves they have left. And one character is someone who she is an orphan at this point. She's just trying to get by. And then another character who is a practitioner of what is almost a lost magic. And he noticed something in the other character. Her name is Lon. He notices something in her that makes him think that she has some kind of relationship with magic as well. They also have what I think is one of the cutest tropes in character types that you get, which is kind of the grump sunshine. I think the grump sunshine makes perfect sense with these characters. It doesn't just feel like a trope that an author picked out of a hat and decided that's what I'm going to put in this book or something like their agent recommended or something like that. It just, it feels very genuine to who they are. And the more you discover about them, the more that you question what is right and what is wrong. And the more you kind of wonder if maybe they should side with the dark side, if you will, if maybe they should embrace darker kinds of magic in order to push back on certain threats from the outside. I just in general think that the way that the themes are handled in the story are done really well. I like the character development. I like the world. I like the magic. And I think a lot of other people would like it a lot as well. After that, we have another author who has multiple series, and that would be Cinda Williams Chima, the books being The Seven Realms Quartet, or you can start with her new series with The Children of Ragnarok. I think that Cinda Williams Chima does a fantastic job of making you care very quickly about the characters and doing so in a very quiet and intimate fashion. You see them as people in their everyday lives, even though we're in a fantasy world. But because you care so quickly, it feels like every little bit more of the world you discover and everything about the magic and all the details of how things function, it always feels like you're learning that at the perfect pace. You never really feel overwhelmed. And in the case of Children of Ragnarok, the newer one, this is one where it is a Norse-inspired story. And right away, you care very much about the main character. He is someone whose father and grandfather have passed away. His mother owns a farm that does very well for itself and therefore is sought after by other people, including his stepfather. His stepfather does not care for him, does not care for his sister, and is kind of just hoping that the baby that our main character's mother is currently pregnant with, that once that baby is born, he might be able to be rid of our main character, and that way the farm will then be in his own bloodline. So you are seeing what you know is likely going to result in domestic abuse, if not death, and you care so much about this character, you care so much about his family, and you just want what's best for him. And we start from that small space and then we expand. Our characters in both this and the Seven Realms Quartet, they start out very flawed. They start out really only caring about the things that are close to them, which makes perfect sense. And then they go on these journeys that lead to phenomenal character growth. And it leads them to interact with other characters in the story because both of these are multiple perspectives. So I really like the way that she writes her characters. And I do think that if you are someone who typically reads adult fantasy and maybe you're wanting to try young adult, I think these are pretty good ones to give a go. Last on the list, we have Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. This is the first book in the Aurelian cycle. I love this trilogy. I think most of you know how much I love this trilogy. It's one of my favorite trilogies of all time. It is amazing. The setup for this is that we are looking at the aftermath of a revolution and we are looking at this through two individuals who are on very different sides of the previous regime. So previously we had people in positions of power, they abused this power, they ruled however they saw fit. So we have Lee who was the son of the previous ruler and then you also have Annie and her family was actually killed by Lee's family. During the revolution, Lee escaped and Annie is somebody who ended up in an orphanage and the two of them met in this orphanage as children. And as they have grown older, Annie has started to recognize that something is a little different about Lee. She has her suspicions as to who he is, 
who his family was. And even though they for so long were all the other had, there is also this factor of trauma playing a role in their relationship and how they are trying to deal with what was done to them before the revolution. But then now that the revolution has passed and now that we are looking at the aftermath, we are trying to establish a new form of government. There's also a lot to do with this new form of government, how they establish who has certain positions, who works certain jobs, and they claim that it's all based off of merit, but what happens when the previous form of government does give certain people advantages over others? Does it really change anything after all? Was the revolution for anything after all? All these questions arise and it's done so, so, so well. And on top of that, you see the horrors, you see the effects of the previous form of government, but then you look at this new form and you see it clearly is flawed as well. And Annie and Lee end up taking on so much of the anger and the hatred and the frustrations with what still is not resolved and the way that they handle it and the ways that sometimes they agree and the ways that sometimes they disagree and they come together and they're pulled apart. It's done so well. That's it for some young adult books that are not Cassandra Clare, Sarah J Mass, Holly Black, some of those really, really big names. I would love to know what your recommendations are, but anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.